Let's talk about why maintaining proper copper and iron levels is crucial for brain health and how having too much of either will drastically spike your risk of Alzheimer's. You probably know that iron is essential for oxygen transport and energy production in the body. It's a key part of hemoglobin and the enzymes involved in energy production in the cell. Copper, on the other hand, plays an important role in metabolizing iron and maintaining the connective tissue in your body. Both of these minerals are absolutely necessary for your health, but there is a catch. They need to be tightly regulated. Both a deficiency and an excess of copper or iron can cause a wide range of issues like oxidative stress, lower immune function, and damage to your nervous system. And when it comes to Alzheimer's, the story gets even more complicated. As we age, many of us lose the ability to properly regulate copper and iron because for both nutrients, bioavailability is key. These minerals need to be bound to carrier proteins like ceruloplasmin so they can be used by your body. Without these transport proteins, much of the copper and iron you consume becomes unbound or biounavailable, meaning it gets stored in the tissue where it shouldn't be. When copper and iron become biounavailable and accumulate in the tissue, they create oxidative stress. This oxidative stress also happens in the brain, and it is directly linked to Alzheimer's. For example, excess copper promotes the formation of amyloid plaques. Amyloid plaques are clusters of abnormal proteins that form in the spaces between nerve cells in the brain, and they are a hallmark of Alzheimer's. These plaques disrupt communication between brain cells and speed up cognitive decline. Again, copper is most dangerous when it's free, meaning it's not bound to a carrier protein. It just floats around in your body and gets stored in tissue, and then there it excites nerve cells and leads to chronic inflammation. Iron can cause similar damage by promoting the formation of reactive oxygen species, ROS, which are harmful molecules that damage neurons. The oxidative damage caused by RS is also a significant driver in Alzheimer's. In fact, studies have shown that people with Alzheimer's tend to have higher levels of copper and iron in their brains when compared to healthy people of the same age. On top of that, excess iron and copper weaken the blood-brain barrier, so the brain's protective shield against toxins. When this barrier wears down, more harmful substances will reach the brain, making the progression of all kinds of neurological problems so much faster. Now, this issue of copper and iron and how they can lead to problems when in excess has been known for quite some time. And it is often said that there is little that we can do about it because both copper and iron are so abundant in our food and drinking water. But that's not entirely true. There are many ways to address metal toxicity and to bring these metals back into balance. How? Well, the key is to improve your body's handling of copper and iron. One of the earliest researchers trying to do this was called Pfeiffer all the way back in the 1950s. He studied the effect of copper on the brain and he linked it to mental health issues like depression, anxiety, and even schizophrenia. He was one of the first to develop programs that only used vitamins and minerals to help his patient detox these excess metals. A lot of his research has kind of been overlooked and many newer studies just seem to be rediscovering what we already know from his work. Unfortunately, much of the current research focuses on chelation therapy as a solution, which removes excess metals with synthetic chelators. Or they will suggest that you follow a low iron, low copper diet. I'm personally not a big fan of chelation therapy because it can have some pretty harsh side effects. It not only pulls out toxic metals, but also depletes you in vital minerals like magnesium, calcium, and zinc. And diet restriction alone doesn't get to the root of the problem. If your body isn't metabolizing copper and iron properly, even eating less of these minerals won't stop them from ending up unbound and stored in the wrong places. What I'm trying to say is that you can become copper toxic on a low copper diet if your body cannot transport the copper around. Same with iron, and both will just get deposited in the tissue over time. What you really need to do is get to the core of the issue, reducing the excess and making these two minerals bioavailable again. I have a lot of videos on copper and iron toxicity on my channel that go into detail about the symptoms and how to test for it. 
Generally, when it comes to fixing these imbalances, your focus should be on copper first. Once you eliminate the excess copper and increase your bioavailability, iron often falls back into place as well. That's because copper and ceruloplasmin, so the copper transport protein, make iron bioavailable. So if you fix your copper problems, fixing your iron problems will be a lot easier since your body can now use and transport it more effectively. Of course, you always also want to improve your elimination organs, so your liver, kidneys, and skin. But that goes without saying and should be part of any good nutritional program. Also keep in mind that managing copper and iron isn't just for people at risk of Alzheimer's. I'm still fairly young, but I suffered from severe copper toxicity in my late 20s, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me until I researched this. Reducing metal toxicity is important for everyone, and I'd argue it's one of the most promising ways for improving your health and fixing things like chronic inflammation and oxidative stress. This goes no matter how old you are, and it's definitely a rabbit hole with a lot of information, but your health will thank you for it later, trust me.